the next thing that you said was collaborate with others, identify who to get feedback from. It's a kind of counterintuitive to seek out somebody who you know is going to disagree with your decision, right? Or where you think the decision is going. In practicality, how, you know, how does somebody put this in, into practice? What does this look like on a day-to-day -day basis when, you know, We've got these decisions being thrown at us. We're so used to come making decisions on our own and not necessarily mm -hmm. inviting others into the conversation. When do I know? And I know I'm asking you multiple questions, but I'm really approaching the same question from different angles. When do I know that this decision is stands up to it like it, it's big enough to require or to make sense for me to invite someone else in to give me feedback? Sure. Um, the, the, the first two checks are, are, are quite easy. When you have, you know, a program, a project, a decision that's going to require support from someone else. And that might be because of expertise or for whatever reason, they may be the, the, the owner of the firm or the company and it might require large capital investments. So you need to get them on board with the decision because they're going to be a key player and helping your team, quote unquote, win or accomplish your goals. The second is who's going to be impacted? What's the downstream negative implications or positive implications? And are we thinking about that? Because a, a, a major theme throughout the book is empathy. And so are we thinking about others when we are making decisions? And I, I have to say, I mean, we live in the United States. And for those that are global, you probably can appreciate the statement as well. But so often we're making decisions in our own best interest and we're forgetting about those of others. And in today's world of business, referrals, perception matter. And so thinking of others as well and getting their opinion is, is very valuable as well. And then last but not least is you know to, to reach out to potentially experts. Somebody may not have a role in a decision, but they might have been through the same process or can empathize with your situation and provide you advice about how to navigate potentially a complex or tricky road. And this is, you know, all components of, of, you know, collaboration. And there are also tools out there that organizations can use to really establish a really effective collaborative culture. And, and one is, you know, it's an easy one. There's a lot of them, but one is easy. Is it's a racy. Is you define who's responsible, accountable, consulted, and informed. It's a very simple tool that, when de when deployed correctly, just affects and moves a culture. And so, I, I I like to be very efficient with my time as well as my teams. And I don't. And and I don't know, let me say this a different way. We should only invite individuals into this collaboration that have a seat at the table. Because how often have we seen somebody jump in and take control of a meeting when it wasn't even theirs? They don't even have a, 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 a they don't even have a, a dog in the fight per se, or times where people forget or overlook that they should be participating. And so this is a, a whole notion of accountability and collaboration to making sure we've got all the right people sitting around the table. Um, and really coming to the best conclusion available to us with the information that we know of.